Hmm. Oh, hi. See, in 1903, the Wright brothers made the first successful powered flight using this machine. Now, while the flight only lasted for 12 seconds, uh, it proved that we can make flying machines heavier than air that can carry their own weight and the weight of a passenger on it. Fast forward to the present time, and we have a large collection of airplanes with different sizes, different shapes, and they serve different functionalities. So you have the transportation airliner, jet fighters, you have agriculture airplanes, you have firefighting airplanes, and much, much more. Well, despite all their differences, they all have one thing in common. Wings. As you might already know, wings are the devices that generate lifts, which support the weight of the airplane and allow it to go up and fly in the air. But, how do wings actually create lift? Well, allow me to explain. To understand lift, we first need to understand how air behaves when it's moved around objects. To keep it simple, I will divide this behavior into four principles. I will explain each one of them and then we will try to apply them on the wing to see how wings actually create lift. So, the first thing you need to know is that air can exert pressure forces on solid surfaces, on solid objects. How, you might ask? Well, we need to take a closer look. And now you can see that air is formed from a large number of small particles, all of which are in a rapid, random and continuous motion. Each time one of those particles collides with a surface, it will exert a small force on it. If we sum and average all these forces, we get what we call the average pressure force. If we divide this pressure force with the area of the surface, we get what we call pressure, air pressure. Now, pressure on the surface can increase or decrease depending on the conditions. However, if the pressure decreases, the forces on the surface also will decrease, and vice versa. And an important thing you should know is, in air, the change in pressure will always spread equally and gradually in all directions. And now for the second principle. Now the second principle is easy. Air particles always move from high pressure areas toward low pressure areas. For example, if I take a chunk of air, I put a high pressure area on the left of it and a, high, a low pressure area on the right of it. Now you can see that this high pressure area is exerting more forces in that direction than the low pressure area is exerting in the opposite direction. So we have a net force which is pushing the chunk of air on that direction toward the low pressure area. And an important thing you need to know is the higher the pressure difference, the faster the air particles will go. So air moves from high pressure to low pressure areas and the higher the difference, the faster the particles will go. Easy. Now let's talk about the interaction between a solid object and air. Let's say we have a solid object, uh, a cube, and the cube is moving. Because the air is being pushed by this cube, a high pressure area will be generated, will be created on the upper surface. And this high pressure will spread equally and gradually in all directions in air. And now, since we know that air particles move from high pressure areas to low pressure areas, you can see that any particle entering in this high pressure zone will be pushed away from it toward the surrounding air. Because the pressure inside this zone is higher than the pressure in the surrounding. Well, one thing you need to know that in the center line, any particles entering in this zone, it will be pushed back in the same direction. And then, since the cube is moving, it will enter again, and then it will be pushed back, and enter again, and pushed back. So you can see that this particle cannot go anywhere. It is just bouncing up and down, up and down in the same place. So we call this point, where the particle cannot move anywhere, the stagnation point. But other than that point, all the particles will, will fly away from the surface. Okay, principle three, done. Now, for the last point, we have a surface with a ramp. If air is flowing parallel to the surface and suddenly it encounters an angle such that the surface is going away from the airflow, the airflow will try to pull air from beneath it near the angle, which will cause the pressure 
to drop in that area. Uh, this pressure drop will spread equally in all directions. And now since the pressure above the airflow is higher than the pressure beneath it, the airflow will bend down and if possible it will try to follow uh, the ramp. Now what you need to know is if we increase the velocity of the airflow, uh, the pressure at the angle will actually decrease even more. The same thing will happen if we make the angle steeper. That's it. Easy, huh? Now, let's have a small quiz. Now, we know what will happen if the airflow uh, encounters an angle. Can you guess what will happen if the airflow encounters a curved surface? You have five seconds. Go! So when the flow reaches the, the curved surface, uh, since the surface is going away from the flow, uh, the flow will try to pull air from beneath it and the pressure will drop in that area. And since the pressure is higher above than beneath the airflow, it will bend down. But now, if you look again, the same thing will happen. The surface is going away from the flow, the flow will try to pull material, the air and the pressure will drop because of the pressure differences uh, the airflow will bend again but if you look again the same exact thing will happen until the airflow will reach the end of the curve so in conclusion if the airflow encounter a curved surface in such a way the surface is going away from the airflow what will happen is low pressure area will form along the surface and the airflow will bend and follow the curvature of that surface again what you need to know is if we make the flow faster the, the the low pressure will drop even more and if we make the curvature higher means tighter the pressure will drop even more okay now we have our four principles uh, let's apply them uh, on the wing and try to understand how lift is created so okay the story begins at the airport we have our little airplane is ready to take off well if the airplane is not moving nothing will happen and now let's zoom in on the wing to see exactly what's going on and now the aircraft will start rolling down the runway while the wing is moving it's pushing the air in front of it this will create a high pressure area on the tip of the wing and somewhere in that high pressure area we have a stagnation point like we saw in the third principle any other particles entering that high pressure area will be pushed away toward the upper or the lower surface of the wing let's take a look at the upper surface of the wing since it is a curved surface and the curvature is going away from the flow the particle will follow the curvature of the surface and a low pressure area will, will be created along the upper surface of the wing. However, since the curvature at the tip of the wing is much higher than the curvature at the tail, uh, the pressure drop at the tip of the wing will be much higher than the pressure drop at the tail. And now let's examine the bottom surface. So the bottom surface can have a straight shape or a curved shape if it has a straight uh, shape well a high pressure area will be created because it's pushing against uh, the air if it is a curved surface it will have a low pressure area however since the curvature is small and since the surface is still pushing against the air we have kind of balance between high pressure created by pushing the air and the low pressure created by the curvature Usually, uh, the result is a small low pressure area along the uh, uh, bottom surface, which is much smaller than <laughs> the low pressure area on the top surface of the wing. So, in conclusion, we can see that the pressure over the wing is much lower than the pressure under the wing. So, uh, when a wing is not moving, the pressure over and under it uh, are equal and so the pressure forces acting downward and upward on the surfaces are equal which means that the wing will not move however when the wing starts uh, moving in the air through the air uh, the pressure over the 
top surface will drop which means the forces acting downward on the upper surface are much smaller than the forces acting upward on the lower surface this will create a net upward force and this net upward force is what we call lift and yeah that's how a wing actually generates lift by creating a pressure difference between its uh, top surface and its bottom surface so you can see that the top surface of the wing actually plays a big role in generating lift forces that's why we take a big care about it and we make sure it is smooth and nothing will disturb the airflow over it now oh, i need you to notice two things uh, the air traveling uh, on the upper surface of the wing is moving much faster than the air traveling uh, under the wing why because we have a high pressure area on the tip of the wing and very low pressure area on the top of the wing and as we've seen before uh, the higher the pressure difference the faster the uh, air will move so yeah we can see that the air will move faster toward the top of the top surface of the wing now the second thing because of that low pressure area on the top of the wing the wing will actually suck air from the surrounding and push it down since air has mass it will continue moving even if the uh, wing is already passed now this downward movement uh, uh, of air is what we call downwash now let's see how we can control the amount of lift over the wing first if we have bigger wings, we have bigger surface area, which means more air will flow over the wings and more low pressure area will be created on the top of the wing, and then more lift will be generated. So larger surface area means more lift. Now, if we go faster, the pressure uh, in the high pressure area on the top tip of the wing will increase, and the flow velocity will increase on the top surface of the wing which means uh, that the pressure on the top of the wing will decrease even more uh, thus generating more lift so uh, if we go faster we can create more lift finally if we increase the angle of the wing which we call the angle of attack uh, the lift will increase because the air now has to make tighter turns and which will make the pressure drop even more which equal to more lift so higher angles mean, means uh, more lift now let's go back to the airport and as before we have our uh, 250 ton uh, airplane it's ready to take off it will start rolling down the runway and at the end of the runway it will reach a velocity of 300 km per hour however at that speed the wings are not capable of generating enough lift to overcome the weight of the aircraft so what you can do in this situation can you guess no okay now we cannot make the area of the wing bigger because they are fixed we cannot make them bigger and since uh, we already reached the end of the runway uh, we do not have enough space to go faster so the only uh, remaining thing to do is to increase the angle of the wing. However, the wings are fixed to the airplane and they cannot move. So what you can do? Well, we can increase the angle of the airplane, which will increase the angle of the wing since they are fixed together. So that's why uh, at the end of the runway, the pilots do usually pitch up. We call it pitch up, making the nose of the airplane goes up they pitch up uh, the airplane to make the uh, angle of attack higher uh, which will allow the wing to create uh, enough lift to overcome the weight of the airplane and to make it fly up in the air what I, what I want to say is we don't pitch up the airplane because we want to go in the direction of the nose no, we pitch up the airplane because we want to increase uh, the lift forces of the wing and the direction of the nose and the real flight trajectory directions are very different things actually during flight the airplane nose is always pitched around one between one and three degrees uh, nose up however the airplane is going straight so yeah the direction of the nose has nothing to do with the direction uh, of the travel well you can see that uh, at landing uh, the airplane are pitching up however they are going down 
we pitch up and down the airplane just to control the amount of uh, the amount of lift generated so yeah that's it for today i hope you learned something new in the next episode we'll be talking about how we can control and steer uh, the airplane mid air and if you understood what i explained today please put hashtag understood if you didn't don't just leave uh, put hashtag question and ask any question you want i will be answering all your questions in the comments if you liked what you saw please feel free to subscribe like and share now for the next time please stay safe and see you